Right, hello, welcome back to another little video. So today we're going to be having a look at some optimization we can do with uh, particles when we're having very big full screen particles. Um, quite often they're going to get really, really expensive if you're doing sand, snow, those kinds of things. Sometimes we want to do them, but big full screen, lots of fill rate, lots of overdraw. Um, but there's some optimizations we can do to sort of help fix that. So uh, to start with, we have here just a very basic plane. Um, and I've got this material on it called object collapse. So let's have a look at what that's doing. So um, if I just arrange this. Um, so we're taking the well position and we're subtracting the object position. So the object position is here. That's the center of the object. And well position, this is going to be calculated for every pixel um, in our object and we're just subtracting one from the other so what we're doing is we're getting a direction vector that's from the the exterior point to the center and that's everywhere on our uh, on our mesh um, and we're multiplying that by a value currently set to zero and plug that into world position so um, if I just quickly change this value so if I change this parameter to one what you'll see is our our plane has got bigger um, and it's got bigger by a scale of one. I mean, it's 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 doubled in size effectively, and we can really kind of like scale these up. Um, and every point on it is kind of um, it's pointing the direction it's moving. It the direction each vertice is moving is towards the center. So if we then set this to a value of minus one, it disappears. Uh, it disappears entirely. So what's happened is the every vertex is worked out which direction it is to the center and then we've moved them along that direction a value of, of one in this case minus one because we're going away from uh, the orientation the order we've got these around here um, and that means we can now scale our object down to nothing in the material um, and what's powerful about this is it's now not taking up any um, performance to render um, if I just change this, I think if I just swap these round, I can do that with a one uh, object position. Apply this, and now positive values will make it smaller. There we go. Yeah, and the value of one shrinks it completely. So we either way, whether you use positive or negative value here, um, you're scaling an object down in the material shader um, to. Uh, reduce the, the overdraw. Um, and so we can combine that with another material I've got here. This is a near fade material. So if we have a look, here's our, our translucent smoke or whatever it is. Uh, as the camera gets close to it, it fades away. That's great. That stops any kind of visual popping as we move through the camera. Um, if you're moving through a big sort of smoke cloud, fog cloud, uh, you don't want to see particles popping out. Um, that's a very simple thing to do. It's a function that comes with Unreal. So there's this one here, camera depth fade. Um, it uses the pixel depth and um, distance from the camera, all these fun things. Um, but all we need to do is plug in two values. So fade length, how many units does it take to fade from zero to one? And fade offset is how we start. So in this case, I've just upped the off fade offset to 256 to make it a bit clear, but the default's 24. So now 24 units away, it starts fading until it fades completely out and it takes 512 units so let me get that right so 512 plus 24 units it starts fading 512 units it's finished fading um, and just to emphasize that a little bit I'll stick it up to 256 so here we start fading out fade out fade out fade out completely gone now the problem we've got with this if I just load up the shader complexity um, even though this has now been faded out it's still being rendered it's being rendered as a big completely transparent plane. Um, we don't need to pay that cost. There's nothing actually being useful happening here. So if we can combine these two things together, we can get kind of the best of both worlds. So here we are. We have and control my camera. Uh, have a plane as I zoom in towards it. At some point it's just gonna fade out completely. And as soon as it's faded out, as soon as we know that the opacity is zero, we know we're not rendering, we can just collapse it down. Um, to a single point and we don't have to pay the uh, opacity costs and there we are so this material what does it look like well it's very much what I said just the two things combined together so we have our depth fade and then I'm doing a, uh, a comparison so I'm using a simple if um, 
let's just reset this back to what it was before so using the result of my camera depth fade masking it out because we only want um, a single value from it and we need to compare with the single value here so if we compare with zero and say if our our opacity is zero we get minus one and minus one multiplied by our um, direction collapses our object if I compile that now you might notice there's a few different settings here that you may not have um, one problem you do have with this this setup at least um, don't know how easy it is to see but as the um, as this side of the plane gets to zero it collapses but this side of the plane hasn't collapsed to zero yet so you're getting a visible hard edge along your smoke where you shouldn't be doing uh, or whether we don't really want that yet you can see it quite a bit clearer there maybe I don't know how easy that is to see in the video but um, and so what we want to do rather than comparing against zero uh, we want to compare against a slightly negative number so the values of the camera depth fade will output um, they've been clamped they've been clamped inside the function so all I've done just duplicated the output uh, create a new one called unclamped and plug that in now there's no reason why we couldn't use unclamped values in our um, you know, opacity, negative values of opacity aren't going to do anything in the shader, they're all going to get clamped there, but um, may as well keep it clamped if that's how it was before. Um, but we can also create this result unclamped um, and just gone in, saved that. Now, in our mask, in our material, if I recompile this so that it reflects that new value, um, in our comparison, rather than comparing against zero, where we're getting these kind of like little subtle errors, we can compare against, say, minus 0.05 so it's very so slightly so now we've got a little bit where it fades out to zero opacity and then it waits a little bit before it collapses and that just gives us a little bit of buffer so that there isn't any visible edges on the plane as it smoothly transitions out and obviously the closer it is to zero oops, the more likely you are to see that error yeah it's pretty pretty invisible really. Um, cool, so now if we look at this in the shader complexity obviously this one's not doing anything dynamically but if we compare these two well you can see one of them's kind of completely disappeared visually nothing no costs, as soon as it's faded out it's been collapsed down no costs left now. Um, I said this is useful for particles and so how do we make it work for particles? Well it's basically the exact same logic but if I have here some particles, uh, if I open this up and just apply the, well, if I just apply the object collapse, oops, I put it in the right place. So this is the one that we have to control in the material ourselves, and there's a bit of a problem. So if I set that to minus one, cool, collapses down to nothing, not a problem. If I set it to minus 0.5, it's using the object position, so it's using the center of our emitter, so it's actually scaled the whole thing down, um, which isn't really what we want, is it? We want the whole thing to be scaled or each particle to be scaled individually so rather than using the object position we need to replace that with particle position Oop, position there it is um, and that's just a node and that's just going to work the way we want so if I go into my particle I have already done this if I can find it there it is M particle collapse plug this one in like I said it's exactly the same just swapping object position for particle position and now when I scale this down we can control our, our particle size in our material um, which is cool uh, no, leave that for now um, near fade work is exactly the same that's all done per pixel and uh, distance from camera so we don't need to change this to work with our particles and you can see as you zoom in you get this fading out but we're not getting any of that collapsing because this hasn't been updated but <laughs> Oh, excuse me, um, but we can totally do that if we do the particle fade collapse. This is material has the updated uh, logic, so using the particle position, not the object position, doing the same thing. The unclamped. I'm going to set this to a very small negative number, um, and what we'll see is the particles will fade out and then collapse down to nothing, um, and we'll have a nice performant, well, slightly more performant. Uh, full screen particle effect. So if I go into the shader complexity, so you can actually see this sort of collapsing happening. 
It's all popping out. It's not a gradual thing. But if I compare, if I just go right into this particle where things have started to pop a little bit and I swap that uh, material from the particle fade to, let's just say, the fade. See how much more red we've got there. So visually, no difference at all. It's resetting the emitter each time. So visually, not much difference because um, they're both being faded out. But the difference in overdraw between having a faded out particle and not faded out particle is huge. So one to be aware of. Uh, nice little trick. Obviously you are adding some cost, you are adding some overhead, there's definitely some math going on um, in doing the um, the comparison and this uh, movement, the, the, the ball position offset, um, but the cost of this being done versus the cost of the overdraw and the fill rate on your screen is going to be much much lower so um, a nice little performance optimization you can make um, for big full screen particles. Um, hope that was helpful. Uh, as always, questions, comments, etc. do let me know. Um, big thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. Um, I love doing these videos, so uh, the more support I can get, the more often I can get new videos out and the longer I can spend um, doing research for these. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you all next time.